Welcome to Faith and Freedom. For the next few minutes, we hope to inform, inspire, and encourage you as we discuss legal victories and challenges to your fundamental freedom and religious liberties. Faith and Freedom comes to you from Liberty Council, a civil liberties education and legal defense organization. Join us now as Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council, explains the latest legal issues all across this country. In the courtrooms of America, Liberty Council is winning the battle for your constitutional freedom. The future and the soul of America is literally at stake, and that's why we thank you for your partnership and your prayers with the Ministry of Liberty Council, especially as we celebrate this Christmas season. I'm Matt Staver, founder and chairman of Liberty Council. Joining me is Matt Barber, vice president of Liberty Council Action. Matt, from our year-end Liberator, which is now six pages, going over what we've done in the past 12 months throughout 2012, it's chuck full of information. We've talked on faith and freedom about religious liberty and life from a litigation standpoint, just bullet points of information, highlights of what we've done mm-hmm. in the past 12 months. Today on Christmas Eve, we want to talk about the family. And certainly you have the typical family, the Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And of course, going back to the family of Adam and Eve, the very foundation of family, is the first form of government. It is from that family where you have moms and dads and children are raised that ultimately give the foundation of who we are as our communities. And if we have weak families, if you destabilize the families, if you break apart families, you ultimately destabilize our government and affects us. That's why it's so important that we're defending family and the unity of family as the union of one man and one woman. And it, it's under attack. So we, we, we have to defend the family. It's amazing to me how Scripture always provides uh, such truths, and, and, and it provides the model for both family and marriage. You mentioned it with Adam and Eve, Mary, Joseph, the, the structure, the family set up. But uh, for marriage, uh, marriage as God designed it, as it's uh, presented in Scripture, is, the, is, is a metaphor for the relationship between Christ and, and the church and the body. Uh, so the family uh, and the church are under attack right now in Liberty Council. We've had a number of, of of good steps forward in the right direction in defense of the family and marriage. And there's significant uh, attacks on the family. We've got some bullet points here, and you can get these from our Liberator going to Liberty Council's website, lc.org, and asking for the Liberator. And you can also call our 800-671-1776 number and ask for particularly this year-end Liberator. We defended the Defense of Marriage Act against an initiative led by liberal senators that would have overturned the law. They wanted to actually overturn the Federal Defense of Marriage Act that defines marriage as the union of one man and one woman, and uh, that was not successful. Of course, now it's been challenged in the courts, and we now know that the Supreme Court is ultimately going to be addressing this issue in 2013. Liberty Council will certainly file a brief in support of the Federal Defense of Marriage Well, and, and DOMA is under attack on a multi-pronged front, and, and legislatively and certainly in the courts. Our own Mandy Campbell with Liberty Council Action, I know, was very influential in, in helping to defeat this uh, legislative move to un- unravel DOMA, correct? That's exactly right. And uh, she was very involved. We have an office in Washington, D.C., and our sister organization is Liberty Council Action. So Liberty Council, Liberty Council Action have an outreach there in Washington, D.C., and you have a voice because of our presence there. We also uh, took on a major case, first of its kind in the country, and this case is a lawsuit filed by a group called Sexual Minorities of Uganda. Smug is the nickname, representing the radical leftists, a law firm that's partially financed by the liberal billionaire George Soros out of New York. And uh, that law firm ultimately filed a suit against a pastor in Massachusetts because of his uh, statements, his seminars, his discussion in Uganda regarding homosexuality and abortion. And there was no law that he broke there. There's no law that he broke here. And in fact, he actually was opposed to the uh, legislation that people were talking about over there that would impose a death penalty for homosexuality. He's obviously talking about the problems of homosexuality, but he was not promoting and, and actively opposed actively the death opposed penalty. to the death penalty. Right. So some people try to say, well, he was doing that. No, he wasn't. But they tried to file suit. It's in federal court in uh, Massachusetts, and they're trying to use international law, yeah. crimes against humanity, to shut him down and silence him. And if they were able to do that when there's no law that he violated in Uganda, no law that he violated here, and some amorphous international law, that would mean that any pastor 
any pro-family person who goes around the country, I should say goes around the world, yeah. and gives a seminar, preaches, could also be a target of this international crimes against humanity if they win. So we are very much uh, litigating strenuously, heavily, no ruling on that case yet. This is an invasion by foreign radicals. They are trying to circumvent, get around our First Amendment, no really trample over it. And you're right, if if this uh, we are not victorious on this, this could set a horrible and dangerous precedent. Uh, Matt, we also filed an uh, amicus brief with the U.S. Supreme Court defending broadcast decency laws against a lawsuit filed by broadcast networks that sought the right to broadcast indecent Programming. What, what are the Yeah, this was uh, Fox News or Fox uh, Channel and others. Uh, they wanted to overturn the FCC broadcast decency laws. They wanted to not be bound by these particular laws and be able to broadcast more indecent kind of language. We filed an amicus brief, and in fact, uh, Dr. Judith Reisman was very instrumental in that as well. She's a visiting professor at Liberty University School of Law, very well versed in the issues of pornography and in indecency and its impact on minors. Uh, we filed this before the U.S. Supreme Court. The Supreme Court allowed the decency restrictions to stand, so they are still in existence. That's the good news. Yeah, and very good news indeed. And Dr. Reisman uh, has just been a, just a, a, really a hero in the pro-family movement for her years of, of service and defending family. Matt, we also filed suit and prosecuted an appeal against uh, a New York governor, uh, Cuomo and New York City Mayor Bloomberg for violating New York's open meetings law by deliberately, and get this, locking the public out of closed-door meetings uh, to, to pass a same-sex marriage law to ram it through. And uh, they really abused the legal system here. We're taking them to task for that. Yeah, we did take them to task. Now, the court ultimately decided that uh, there was no violation, which uh, that's, I think, a wrong decision. Yeah. But uh, they, they clearly locked people out. Lobbyists that had been there for 20 years said they'd never seen anything like this. The governor of New York, the mayor of New York, they ultimately used strong-arm tactics, literally locked the doors so the public couldn't get in and the lobbyists couldn't even get in. And they've got a constitution in that state and federal in state law that says you have to have open meetings. And uh, the public has a right to hear what's going on so they can respond they locked the people out so they could strong arm the same sex marriage law through New York. And and that really is just a microcosm of what we're seeing in a, in the larger sense that when the rule of law is relative and when the interpretation of the constitution is relative then law has no meaning at all. It is survival of the fittest. It's the the strongest man wins, right? That's right. And you know the big case that we have right now going on we've been talking about this on faith and freedom is uh, our lawsuit against the California SB 1172. This is the law that says you can't engage in what's called change therapy. In other words, counselors can't provide any counsel that would seek to reduce or eliminate same-sex attractions, behavior, or identity, and minors can't receive that even though it is benefiting them. We represent minors in this case that actually have been benefited by this law, or I should say benefited by this counseling, mm -hmm. and effective January 1, they won't get it anymore. So this is a huge issue, and we're still going on right now. We're at the Court of Appeals at this moment. Uh, continue to keep this case in your prayers as we move forward. We've got to get this law struck down because time is of the essence, but the impact of this law is significant. Very significant, and certainly the, the experts uh, are, are debating the, the merits of, of change therapy and so forth as, as you know, science will continue to do. But this isn't about the experts or who wins or who loses in that regard. This is about the First Amendment, freedom of speech, and uh, government sanctioning of one viewpoint over another. That's unconstitutional. Yeah, this is about uh, Jerry Sandusky loving something like this yeah. because he could go and abuse someone. That young boy could be confused, have identity issues, then start to act out on the same behavior that he was abused with wants to come to counseling so that he would ultimately not act out on that behavior, well, this law would actually force the counselors to say, no problem, that's normal, natural, just go with the flow. We've got to change your religious and moral views on this issue. So that's why this is so important. Keep it in your prayers. We'll keep you involved. Go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org. You can ask for the Liberator free of charge right there on the website. But if you're not already receiving the Liberator, you don't have this six-page end-of-the-year report. I think it will ultimately encourage you and ultimately help you to understand that uh, you can be a part of this ministry that does so many things. Uh, this is not a mere, uh, you know, smoke and mirror kind of ministry where you do a lot of talking and don't do a lot of action. Liberty Council does a lot, and we can only do that with your prayers, God's, you know, blessing on this ministry, 
and through your financial support as well. So this is the month of December. We're at Christmas time right now, Christmas Eve. We want to wish you a very Merry Christmas, you and your family, as we celebrate the reason for the season. We also ask that at the end of the year, you remember Liberty Council in your year-end giving. This is an important month for Liberty Council as we end the year and begin preparing for the next year, 2013. You can go to Liberty Council's website, lc.org, and make an online credit card contribution, or you can, e you can mail in your contribution, or call us at 1-800-671-1776. You have been listening to Faith and Freedom with Liberty Council. We hope that we have motivated you to stand up for your faith, family, and freedom. We can accomplish a lot when we work together. Get informed and get involved today. Sign up for our free monthly newsletter, The Liberator. We will send it out to you free of charge. Stay informed with our Liberty Alert email updates. Just click on the website at www.lc.org or call us at 1-800-671-1776. Tune in next time to learn more about your rights right here on Faith and Freedom.